How do you know when it's time to let go of a service, offer, or product in your business? Join me in this edition of Thursday's Thoughts as I share my personal experience with letting things go. In this episode, I share why I chose to let go of a 5,000 member Facebook group and why this year's Amplified Soul Live event will be the last one ever. I also provide three questions to ask yourself to help clarify whether you need to let go of a service, product, or offer, or whether you need to push into your resistance and keep going. Trust me, these questions are good. Today's episode is sponsored by my advanced digital training, Unleashed and Unapologetic, How to Become a Thought Leader and Create a Cult Following. Sign up for the training at rubyframon.com forward slash unleashed. And finally, if you're new to the thought to the podcast or you're a loyal thought leader, please make sure you take a moment to drop a rating and review on iTunes. I so appreciate all the love that you guys are sending me. Thank you. Now let's dive right in so I can help you understand when to let go in business. Welcome to today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, thought leaders, welcome to another edition of Thursday's Thoughts. Um, Today, I want to chat with you about knowing when to let go in business. This is a very timely episode as I am gearing up for the finale event of Amplified Soul Live, which is my three-day event that I created and first launched in 2017. Tomorrow, I will be hosting the third annual and final Amplified Soul Live event. And I just feel called to share with you um, why I have chosen to end it and also why this is so important in business for you to really understand when to let something go, whether it's a product or an offer or an experience or maybe people, whatever it is. We need to know when to let go of things in our business. Otherwise, we run the risk of our business feeling stagnant, feeling stale, feeling misaligned. And when it comes to you, the purpose-driven thought leader, purpose-driven entrepreneur, business owner, I know that you're not here to feel any of that. I know that you're looking to create something that feels fulfilling, that feels like something that you're wildly passionate about, something that fuels you. And so it is no service to you to hold on to products, offers, and experiences that really aren't offering any of that anymore. So let me share my personal experience with knowing when to let go uh, to inspire you to understand that it's okay to let things go in business and to create space for something new. And I will also be sharing three questions to ask yourself that will help you understand if this is something you need to let go of or if it's something that you want to keep. So stay tuned for those three questions. Now let me talk about my experience uh, with letting things go. Now back when I first started coaching, I started as a self-love coach and I created a Facebook group called uh, the Self-Love Tribe. And this Facebook group grew organically within a year and a half to almost 5,000 members. That's huge. I mean, I didn't run ads to this. I didn't boost anything. It just organically grew. And it was beautiful to witness. And yet over that year and a half, I found myself becoming less and less excited about showing up in that space. Now, during this time in my business, I was also going through an evolution And I was evolving from the title of self-love coach into, um, I believe at that time, it was transformational life coach. And so I was going through this evolution. 
in my business where the Facebook group just no longer felt totally aligned. There was something off. But the thing that made me realize that this is something I need to let go of was the sheer fact that I hated showing up there. You know, when I first started the group, I loved it. I loved going in there. I loved um, supporting those who were in it. And then somehow it flipped and turned into an energy suck, something that was incredibly draining on my system. And so I just stopped showing up. I would simply have my assistant schedule posts in there and I wouldn't even go in there to, to check on them. I was just so unattached to it. And that's when I knew, I mean, there was almost 5,000 people in that group and I had a responsibility because I created that container for them. And yet at the same time, I didn't want to show up. I didn't want to participate. And so it left me with the decision of, do I keep it or do I let this go? I can keep it because in business strategy, marketing strategy, people tell you to keep these things because, hey, you have all these leads that you could just create an offer for and sell it to them. And sure, that, that's a smart thing to do, sure. But I'm not in this to just make money. I'm not in this to just profit. I'm in this for my purpose. And my purpose was evolving. And I was evolving from the idea of just being a self-love coach to something different. This no longer excited me. So why the fuck would I start creating products and offers to sell to these people in this group? It just felt out of integrity with who I was. And so I decided to then archive the group. And that was a big decision. And I remember announcing it in the group and there was a lot of people that were disappointed and the people pleaser in me was like, oh shit, am I doing the right thing? But I just kept falling back into, into the, um, the feeling of, of being so unattached to it and, and lacking passion to keep it going. I, I didn't want to keep it because it just kept draining my energy. So I tapped into my courage and I archived the group, archived almost 5,000 people. But in doing so, I created space for myself to really evolve into the next level of my coaching and the next level of my leadership, which then also created space for me to create new offers and new groups and new products and services that felt more exciting to me and, and better aligned. I'm going to share another story with you, and this one's about Amplified Soul Live. And again, the third and final event kicks off tomorrow, and I'm feeling very, very bittersweet about it. For those of you who don't know, my past career, I was an event marketing director and producer. I also have a degree in entertainment business management specifically for events. I love events. I, I worked in, in nightlife events for almost eight years, producing large scale raves, you know, 5,000 to 7,000 people, small concerts, you know, a few hundred people. And I fucking loved it. The reason why I left that industry was because of my addiction. Uh, I wasn't able to separate the two. And when I came into the personal development space, I loved the idea of bringing people together in, a, in a one room, bringing people in contact with each other. Because what I was noticing from the online space is that as connected as we are, we are actually very disconnected as a society nowadays. So I wanted to bring people together in person. I wanted to merge my passion for, for helping people evolve with my passion for producing phenomenal events. So I came up with the idea of Amplified Soul Live. And in 2017, when I launched the first event, I worked my ass off. I mean, I fucking hustled. And it was a good hustle. I was excited. You know, I was super excited at the idea of throwing my first event. And I ended up with almost 100 people in the room. There was just over 90 people in the room for a first event 
that was a phenomenal success. Now, what most people don't know is that out of those almost 100 tickets, there was literally maybe a dozen that were paid for. The rest were free. <laughs> it's interesting looking back. I mean, for me at that point in time when I was running my first event, I saw it as an entry point for people to connect and connect with me and to also experience me with the hopes of continuing the journey with them. Like most events, you have an invitation and you invite people to continue working with you. And, and so for me, putting up all the money for the event on the front end was a risk I was willing to take because I knew that on the back end of the event, I would have enrollments and I would have new clients and my business would be thriving. The first event was about $20,000, about 20, I think it was $21,000 up front. And I filled my business after that. It was a huge success. I had amazing clients. And at the same time, I realized that there was a misalignment with the type of client and with the type of people who were in the room at that first event. I really had this deeper desire to refine the audience and ensure that I was really just speaking to and working with people who I was wildly passionate about serving, which are the leaders, the purpose-driven leaders, purpose-driven creatives, purpose-driven entrepreneurs. So for the second event in 2018, I refined the messaging, which attracted a more refined audience. And I ended up with 55 people in the room. So almost half the size. Now out of those I would say about 50% were paid tickets, 50% were free. And again, this is the shit that people don't tell you about events. That event was around the same price. It was about around $22,000 up front. I didn't make as much on the back end, um, but I made enough. Yet it, it, wasn't, it, it didn't seem like something that would be sustainable in the long run. Now, the event itself, I fucking love. It's the thing that lights me up the most. When I am there in the presence of all these incredible souls, I am lit the fuck up. And there is a magic that happens in that room that it is indescribable. It is where I want to be. And yet all these other factors weren't working. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fucking hustle. It's a lot of money. And with that, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of sleepless nights. All for the sake of those three days. And albeit those are three of the most magical days that I experience every single fucking year. But is it worth it for me to then sacrifice like 362 days of the year just for these three days. And that, that was what I was sitting with after the second event in 2018. And I started producing the third event, very excited, changed the location. It's my dream location. It's the location that I've been seeing in visions. Um, and I was super stoked about that. And this event's a $30,000 event, $30,000 up front. And I've sold, you know, I have about 40 seats a little over 40. And again, the part that most people don't tell you about, I would say 55% of that is paid tickets. The rest were free. And it's a really interesting space that I find myself in because this past year has been one of the hardest years in a long time. And one of the hardest due to the levels of stress that I've been putting upon myself. And so much of the stress is attributed to this event. And I'm just at a point now in my career and in my life where I'm not willing to put myself through that anymore. There's so much more to life and there's so much more that I can offer minus these levels and these stress levels, minus the anxiety. There's so much more that I can create 
but from a place of fullness rather than depletion. Now, the event itself this year is going to be phenomenal. I know it because I know myself and I know how I deliver and I over exceed people's expectations. And every single person in the room is going to leave forever transformed and with a brand new tribe of people. But now, after doing it three times, I can look at it and say, it's, it's not worth the depletion of energy that I've been experiencing. And I'm ready to close this chapter. It's been a fucking amazing chapter. Let me tell you, I've taught myself that I can create anything, that I can accomplish anything with the right drive and the right motivation. I mean, for me to have accomplished this, this event in the past three years is a fucking feat that most coaches don't ever achieve. And I'm really proud of myself for doing this and really honored that I had this opportunity to do, to experience this. Very grateful for every single person who's been part of these events. Humbled that people fly from all over the world to spend those three days with me. And I know that there is a better way, a way where I can create the same ripple of impact, but in a way that fuels me. So this is where I want to share with you three questions to ask yourself, because maybe you're looking at your business right now and saying, yeah, you know, I'm kind of feeling like this is an energy suck or this feels depleting. This isn't exciting anymore. And there's a few different reasons why we can experience this, right? One is like the chapter might just be closed. You might be done with this experience. You've learned everything you need to learn and you're good. It's, you're t it's time to move on to the next thing. The other reason though could be that there's some sort of internal resistance and um, you're avoiding a massive learning opportunity. So the three questions that I'm going to give you are going to help you clarify whether this is something that you need to stick with to continue to learn what it's there to teach you or whether this is something that you need to let go of. So the three questions are one, does this align with what I value? Does this align with what I value? So of course you need to know what you value first. If you haven't, ever done a values exercise, I highly recommend doing it. You really want to get clear on what your top five values, values are. And those top five values have to be baked into your business. Because if your business isn't abiding or aligned by your, with your values, then it's not going to feel right. It's going to feel unfilling. It's going to feel misaligned. It's going to feel stressful. It'll cause anxiety. So for me, does it, with Amplified Soul Live, does this align with what I value? Yes and no. <laughs> you know, uh, the connection for sure, um, the transformation and growth for sure, growth is something I value. But where it didn't align with what I value was health, my health. Like I said, three days of amazingness isn't enough to make up for the other 362 days of stress and anxiety and sleepless nights that I endure because of this. So for me, that question was a no. Now, question number two, does this align with who I am today? I emphasize today because as human beings, we're constantly evolving and shifting. And like I shared in, in my story about evolving from a self-love coach, like as you evolve personally, your business is meant to evolve. So if there are things that no longer align with who you are today and where your business is at today because you've evolved, then it's time to let that go. For me, um, you know, the, the self-love tribe Facebook group didn't align with who I was at that point in time. It no longer aligned. It did at one point, but it no longer did. I wasn't working with just clients who needed support with self-love. I was working with clients on a, on a different scale. And so it just no longer aligned. It didn't align with where I was in my evolution. So that was a no. Question number three, and this one I think is, is the most important. 
does this fuel me? Because if it doesn't fuel you, it's most likely depleting you. And with Amplified Soul Live, it most definitely fuels me on those three days. I am more inspired than ever. I am more motivated. I am excited and passionate and fucking on it. It's just an amazing, incredible feeling. And on the flip side, the other 362 days of the year, it's not fueling. It's fucking tough to get people in the room. It's fucking tough to continue putting yourself out there over and over and over and over again for this one event, trying to fill seats, putting out the money, dishing out my visa number over and over and over again, hoping that more ticket sales will come in to help me make up for the expenses. I mean, it's draining. It's not fueling at all. So it was a no. (laughs) These are the questions that help me decide whether or not I need to keep something or, and stick with it or let it go. And you know, if you answered yes to any of these questions, then that's a sign that that offer, that service, that product, whatever it is, still has something to teach you there's still something in it for you to activate, for you to learn from. And I encourage you to just stick with it, but find a way to, to reinvigorate the passion that you once had for it. And that can be done by really leaning into what it is that you're really resisting. If, if this is a product service or experience or, or offer that you need to continue doing because you answered yes to these questions, then question your resistance. What is it that I am actually resisting here? What is it that I'm scared of? And within that, you'll usually find your answer. So let me recap the questions again to help you know when to let go of something in your business. Question number one is, does this align with what I value? Question number two is, does this align with who I am today? And question number three is, does this fuel me? So whatever it is in your business that you're questioning, whatever it is that you're considering to let go, ask yourself these three questions first. And if you do answer yes to any of these and lean into your resistance and ask yourself, what is it that I'm actually scared of? What is it that I'm actually resisting? If you've answered no to these questions, then it's time to let it go and give yourself permission to create the space for something better, something more aligned, something that actually fucking fuels you. So that's it for today's episode of Today's Thought Leader, this edition of Thursday's Thoughts. I want to thank you so much for joining me. This is really a podcast to help you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. And the best way to do that is to ensure that you're always fucking aligned with everything that you're doing. So I really hope that today's episode serves you in a very powerful way. If you're ready to take it up a notch and bring your message to the masses, then I highly encourage you to join Unleashed and Unapologetic, which is my digital training for leaders who are looking to amplify their voice and become the most unleashed and unapologetic versions of themselves so that they can create a brand and a mission and a movement that feels super fucking aligned. For more info on that, go to rubyfreeman.com forward slash unleashed. And finally, if you loved this episode, please share it with a friend and be sure to drop a rating and review on iTunes. If you have any questions about this episode, or just want to say hi, or you want to, reach out and let me know what insights you gained from asking yourself these questions, please do so. My social media handle is at I am Ruby and I love frequenting Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Tech back Monday for a brand new episode of today's thought leader and um, send me some good vibes as I go into the third and final Amplified Soul Live event.